Welcome to Electron Online. and our next Lorentz transformation equation we're going to look at is the time uh, transformation equation. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take the result of the last one where we had the relationship between x and x prime. Remember there's two reference frames. There's the stationary reference frame and there's the moving reference frame and we have observer A in the stationary frame and observer B in the moving reference frame. And some event happens in the moving reference frame so the position measured to that event is x according to a and x prime according to b. And the way we then figured that out was that the distance from a to that event would be this distance right here, which is u times t as observed by a, plus the distance as measured by b, but adjusted for the transformation as we have right here. So in this case it's position, so the position as seen by A is equal to the position as seen by B by this quantity right here. So that's what we have over here, X prime being the distance to the event as seen by B. Now what we're going to do is we're going to turn things around. We're going to now for a moment assume that S prime is the stationary reference frame, so observer B is, is relative to, is in that reference frame, S prime is now going to be stationary. And according to B, looking back, to the, uh, to the uh, reference frame S, this one appears to be moving backwards at a velocity of minus U. And let's say now that we place an event in here, so here's the event in reference frame S, uh, in, in reference frame S, and so then the distance to this event, according to B, would be equal to this distance right here from there to there, which would be a minus UT, so the distance from there to there would be a minus u times t as observed by b. And now we're going to add to that the distance to the event as observed by a, which would be x. And of course we have to adjust for that because what a sees will be different than what b sees for this particular distance. So what we can do then is take that equation and write it like this. We can now say that x prime, which is the distance to the event as seen by b, would be equal to a minus u times t as seen by b, which is t prime plus the distance as seen by a which is now going to be x times the square root of 1 minus u squared divided by c squared. We don't have to change the sign here because it's u squared so negative u quantity squared gives you that. Now we're going to substitute this into the original equation and so what we're going to do now is have an equation that we can solve for t prime in terms of t. So when we do that we get the following equation. I'm going to plug this into here and now our equation becomes x is equal to u times t plus instead of x prime we're going to write minus u times t prime plus x times the square root of 1 minus u squared divided by c squared like that and multiply that times the quantity that would be the square root of 1 minus u squared over c squared. All right, now let's simplify that a little bit by getting rid of the parentheses, multiplying this through, so we end up with x is equal to u times t minus u times t prime times the square root of 1 minus u squared over c squared plus x times, and now this, this times this will give us 1 minus u squared over c squared. So what we're going to do now is get rid of these parentheses, multiplying x times that and see what we get. We get x equals u times t minus u times t times the square root, that's t prime, 1 minus u squared divided by c squared. And here we get plus x minus x u squared over c squared. All right, and now we can see that we have an x on this side and we have an x on that side that cancels out. Okay, now we're going to take the term that has the ut prime and move it to the left side of the equation. So now we end up with ut prime, that becomes positive, times the square root of 1 minus u squared over c squared is equal to u times t, and that would be minus x u squared over c squared. All right, it's starting to shape up now, because what we're going to do now is divide all three terms on both sides of the equation by u. So we're going to divide the left and the right side by u, so 1 over u times this, and here we're going to go 1 over u. And now let's move over here, we have a little bit more room. So that becomes now t prime times the square root of 1 minus u squared over c squared is equal to 
t, and that would be minus x times u divided by c squared. And finally, what we can do is divide both sides of the equation by this radical right here. And so now we have t prime is equal to t minus x u over c squared divided by the square root of 1 minus u squared divided by c squared. So now we have an equation that allows us to transfer time from one reference frame to time in another reference frame. So going back to our original setting, here we have S, the stationary reference frame, S prime, the moving reference frame, some event happening in the moving reference frame. We want to know what the time is measured, what the time is in terms of what B measures, what the person in the moving reference frame measures in terms of time that's measured by the person in the stationary reference frame. And if you want to have the equation turned around, which you can do, you can then say you can solve this for T, and you can say that uh, t prime times the square root of 1 minus u squared divided by c squared is equal to t minus x u, x u divided by c squared. And solving that for t, we can say that t is equal to t prime times the square root of 1 minus u squared over c squared plus x u over c squared. And so this equation will allow you to transfer from t prime to t, and this equation will allow you to transfer from t to t prime. So both equations are basically the same, just in a rearranged form. And this is typically the form that you'll see in most textbooks. And so that's how we go from one, the time in one reference frame to the time in the other reference frame. You can see you go back and forth between the two. And that's how it's done, and that is what we call the Lorentz transformation equation for time.